The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Friday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. we got about 24 minutes to go until the opening bell, and we got markets picking up where we left off yesterday. Lower price with the S&Ps down about 36 points. That's about 6 tenths percent of the red, trading at 59.42. And you see the acceleration, almost 100 points in the S&Ps from where we were yesterday at around this time at 8.30 to where we were at about 3 a.m. at the lows. You're talking about almost 100 points. NASDAQ 100. Quite the slide yesterday as well. You started things off yesterday morning at about 21,000, almost 200. And yeah, you trade down almost 400 points. 20,794 were negative by about 1% in the NASDAQ 100, off 203 points. Dow, off 182, or 4 tenths percent in the red right now to get the Russell. The Russell's been the strongest, even on the pullback, even this morning. You're only down, what, not even 2 tenths percent. Russell off by 4 points. Bitcoin? Yeah, Bitcoin, not not catching the decline with the rest of the markets. As you see, Bitcoin up $2,200 on the session, technically crude, down 50 cents at 68.20 right now. We got gold contract up $3. We hit a low of 25.41 yesterday, and we got to talk about notes and bonds. Now, we got retail sales out this morning. We had Chairman Powell talking yesterday, all right, saying they're going to be in no need to rush with the cuts. And what did you have? You had... Lower price and higher yield coming at you yesterday afternoon. You traded all the way from 109.24 to 109.07. You had a market sell-off on higher yield, and we're right back to the lows. At 109.11, you get the 10-year right now at about 4.45%. 4.45, which is interesting. That's kind of right where I was when I came on the air yesterday, right? 9 a.m. yesterday. We go up to 109.24. You trade lower on Chairman Powell's words. Nonetheless, we are lower on lower on price, higher on yield this morning. You jump over to the dollar. Dollar hits a high yesterday morning at 107, and pretty similar action in terms of where we are on the yield curve, where we are on the dollar. Right now, the dollar, 106.61, and you take a look on a longer term basis we got to go back to a three-year weekly to see this whole area and yeah right you don't have to be a master technician it's how i put it sometimes all right where's the top of this range somewhere between 106 and 107 and we're sitting right in the middle of 106 and 107 and we just hit 10706 on the dollar the highs back to a year ago 107 348 so within what 0.248, you know, 240 ticks or so, right? Right at that level. Critical area for the dollar in terms of where we go from there. And with the dollar strength, gold had done so well with dollar strength for a period of time, but not the case recently. Now, gold technically positive on the session, but that's going from where we were yesterday afternoon. And yeah, gold trading at 25.74, but you take a look at this on a daily. Where are we heading? Maybe we're heading back to 2450. That would be the highs of the A to B leg that you originally had in gold. Okay. We back this up. Gold starts its A point February 14th, Valentine's Day. You can pick your B point, whether it's the B point that you made on April 12th of 2448, or it could be the B point that you made on May 20th of 2454. You trade back and you accelerate and you do a one-to-one -one A to B C to D formation. We top out near 2800 and we've now made a 50% retracement. And maybe, you know, we got a nice double top here. The 618 correlates to about 2500, 2480 on this chart. And uh, we'll see where we go. We'll see where we go with dollar strength. We see where we go with the dollar trading above that 107 price point and that of course is going to impact the gold contract we jump over to the volatility index talked about this yesterday that the vix is a little affordable and yeah you got a little bit of a spike in the overnight session as you traded lower vix still 1465 right now jumping back to the s and p's for a moment we're trading at 5941 
We're just going to back it up briefly. Okay. And yeah, we traded. I'm zooming in on the election because it is remarkable that we're right back to where we were prior to the election. All right. There's Tuesday. We had an acceleration on Tuesday. You come into Tuesday at 57.50. Tuesday night, we still didn't know who won. We were trading at about 5,800. All right. So we're 140 points above there, which is just more than 2%. I give you some context because we were trading at 59.27 on October 17th. Now, yes, there was a Trump bump for sure. But keep in mind, we were trading at 59.27 October 17th. We're only 10 to 15 points above where we were then. You see the acceleration on the election. We have a little bit of a give back. What's going to happen at this 59.20 area? We're right above that level. You break into here. You're going back to test the lows of 5,700. Okay? These markets were priced very well coming into the Trump up. And yes, it should matter, man. Deregulation, corporate tax cuts. Okay? It should matter. But what about the other stuff? Right? What about the other stuff in terms of tariffs? In terms of Matt Gates potentially being the attorney general? Right? How does all this stuff play in? We're going to find out. But nonetheless, the markets... Given some of it back this morning, and let's jump into the retail sales numbers. Strong numbers. Headline, 0.4% versus 0.3%. Now, the core, okay, 0.1 versus 0.3, and the control group, actually a decline. But eight of the 13 categories posted increases led by electronics and appliance stores. And this is where the data showed so-called so -called control group sales, which feed into the government's calculation of goods spending for GDP, decreased 0.1% in October, a notable step down after rising the most since the start of 2023. That excludes food, auto dealers, building materials, and gas. But over the past three months, that control group has increased at an annualized 4.6%, but quite a pullback. Whether you're talking about core and talking about control group, well below what the estimate was thinking there. And nonetheless, you jump over to yields. And what do we see? We see a little bit of lower price, higher yield right now in terms of 109.08 right at the lows, critical areas on that 10-year as well. We jump around to some of the big dogs. You got Apple trading down almost $3 at 225 right now. Apple surged higher to 228 yesterday. You jump over to Amazon shares. They pulled back from their high at 216 almost yesterday morning. We're at 208.80 right now for Amazon. Microsoft, MSFT, down to 422. We jump over to Tesla. Tesla sitting about 313. You're actually going to be positive by a couple dollars for Tesla shares. Google this morning at the lows of 176 as of yesterday. Meta shares. 571 right now. We jump over to some of those streamers. Netflix, Disney had a big day yesterday with their earnings up to 114. You give back some of it. You're trading right now down about a dollar. Nah, pennies. Basically flat. You have the ask right where we closed yesterday at 109.12 as I was talking. All right, folks, stay tuned. It's going to be an interesting one. We're going to dig into some of those retail sales. We'll go over some of the other news going on this morning. We got markets in negative territory coming into Friday action. Yeah, Friday action. We got the gold contract up by $2, the dollar, dollar, king dollar, as my dad would say. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. 
published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This portion of the Morning Market Kickoff is brought to you by Direction's Daily Leveraged and Inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, folks. We come into... 12 minutes to go until the opening bell, and you have markets accelerating near those overland lows. You got the S&Ps now down 40 points, or two-thirds of percent. We're trading at 59.39. The Nasdaq 100 picking up steam as well, making overnight lows at 20,779. You jump back to those retail sales for a moment. And it is interesting in terms of this giving us a little bit of a precursor of how we're coming into the holiday season. There are five less shopping days in between Thanksgiving and Christmas, just how the calendar falls this year. So get ready for the sales coming early. You already see the pre-Black Friday sales, the pre-pre-Black Friday sales. They're trying to squeeze in those extra sales because they have almost a whole extra week that is not between Thanksgiving, Black Friday, and Christmas. And that's when a lot of people really used to feel, at least, um, excuse me, in terms of when that shopping gets done for the holidays. And yeah, as they say right here, economists are going to be paying close attention. Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Right, Walmart and Target earnings next week, they're going to help guide the outlook. We'll get to find out, man, how we do there. But decent numbers. Yeah, retail sales, month over month, 0.4%. Now, these are not adjusted, okay? Unadjusted for inflation. So they should be going up no matter what because we know we have some level of inflation going on. All right, now, keeping in, we go to Mr. Powell yesterday. I mean, this should be pretty much expected at this point. Somehow it makes news, and it should, but... Powell says the Fed does not need to be in a hurry to reduce interest rates. I would agree. The economy is not sending any signals that we need to be in a hurry to lower rates, Powell said in Dallas, talking yesterday. The economy is not sending any signals, okay? The strength we are currently seeing in the economy gives us the ability to approach our decisions carefully. I would agree. There's a lot of uncertainty out there right now, okay? And yeah, we'll see where they go, but nonetheless, he kind of already reiterates what you should know. On the question of inflation, he cited progress that has been broad-based, 
okay, toward that 2% goal. But boy, 2% is going to be tough, man. Powell said the two indexes are indicating inflation by the Fed's preferred measure at 2.3% in October or 2.8%, excluding food and energy. Well, guess what? They care about the number that's 2.8. Okay? They're not going to get caught up in the headline number that coincides with crude trading lower because that's not representative of inflationary forces in the market right now. Inflation is running much closer to our 2 percent longer run goal but it is not there yet they always said the last mile was going to be the toughest and we're at 2.8 right now but maybe the two percent long run goal should be a little bit higher maybe the natural rate of growth right now is a little bit higher and if they go down to two they're going to be restrictive you got to keep that out there and boy if he ever changes this number watch out in this market if he says you know what our longer run goal and you know, if you're in the den, if you're watching this program, you've heard it, all right? The Fed, they've been asked the question, right? Will the longer-term goal be moved higher? And they have resisted. The goal is 2%. He's put it out there, period. Well, he's put it out there for years, but we're getting to the point in time that if they do really start pausing, if there's inflationary forces in play, we have tax cuts, we have deregulation, it is very real to consider that the natural rate of growth in this economy with inflation, tax cuts, a rising debt, and deregulation could be above 2%. Yeah. And so, uh, yes, we go from there. But nonetheless, you had Powell talking yesterday. You have retail sales this morning. And we have markets reacting with lower price coming at you as it seems like, you know what, we might not get those cuts coming down the line. And I think that's the prudent thing for the Fed to do at this point. Maybe we get one in December. But you start getting into an overnight lending rate of three and a half, three and a quarter, ooh, there's a very real argument to be made that the natural rate of growth that the Fed needs to be at is potentially in a high three or even a four. And as they go down there, you could be restrictive at a time when, you know, you want to be restrictive at a time when the core retail sales are only going up 0.1% and the control group is actually declining. That's the worry there. All right. All right. What else we got going on? It's going to be quite a sideshow. Now, this is I talked about it yesterday and you have to talk about it politically because this is what's going to happen coming down the line. We're almost two months away from January 20th. Ideally, you want to get your cabinet almost in place when you come in so you can hit the ground running on day one. And what I find interesting is you have the journal with the editorial board. OK, not a hard one to talk about, you know, hey. Trump is circumventing the Constitution with resets, recess appointments to the likes of Matt Gates, Folks, you know, this is where, come on, this is not politics. This guy is not, does not have the resume to become the top lawmaker in the country. He's a henchman. And that's what I think most of us don't want, right? Now, what I find so interesting is this would be the, the debate taking place in any other universe if Gates wasn't out there. And it's providing the exact cover that's going on. Now, listen, you got a decorated veteran man, okay? And I just don't know a lot about this gentleman, but it, this would be a battle with the Department of Defense, okay? Secretary of Defense just picking basically a TV personality that's been a veteran. That's a lot usually when it comes to the Secretary of Defense and the powers associated with that position. And it's playing out exactly as you can expect, folks. All the focus is going on Gates. The Wall Street Journal editorial board, they're coming out hard against Gates, as they should. But it's providing the cover for Hexeth, which would be the normal confirmation battle going on. And I would assume we would all look for, it's a Republican Senate, folks. If you can't get your picks through a Republican Senate with a Republican president, you better be careful on the checks and balances that do exist in our Constitution. And so hopefully for positions of this importance that you would have the Senate confirmation and that you wouldn't have recess appointments to the likes of the Secretary of Defense and the Attorney General. Extrapolate that one out into the future for demo you know, democracy, and that's where Trump takes a lot of heat, man. Okay? Um, it's Republicans control everyone. I'm not sure why you would need to circumvent Senate approval for a cabinet position like attorney general and secretary of defense 
with the Republicans in the Senate over there. And I think we all want that. I'd want it in Democrats in the same way, man. I'd want it in Republicans in the same way. All right? Yeah, we go from there. And then, of course, you're going to get RFK in terms of Secretary of Health and Human Services, right? Is that what he did? Department of, what did he? Yeah, Health and Human Services Secretary. Everything's out there. And I get it. You win. You got a mandate like that. That's what's coming. And that's what's real. Um, you know, COVID vaccine, everything that happened during COVID, the inability of free speech, that's real, man. I get it. I, you know, living in Florida, I was thankful. I was living in Florida, folks, and I had some freedoms that people in states like the Northeast did not have, okay? I get that. Uh, I hope it does not contribute to some of the claims against normal vaccines that take place during childhood, okay? Take COVID out of the equation. That's what I hope. And we'll see where that goes. But you had the vaccine makers all trained down yesterday. All right, we're coming back for the open on Friday. Markets in negative territory. We're coming back for the opening bell. Don't go away, folks. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry October 11th and 25th for more live trading action. Your purchase goes towards two sessions, so make sure to sign up now so you don't miss a chance to sit next to Larry as he trades the market live. For all information and to reserve your spot today, go to the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN Education investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open and you're challenging the lows on the S&Ps. Right now, we're off by 41 points or 7 tenths percent in the red, trading at 59.38. NASDAQ 100 making session lows. Below the pre-market low we had at 3.30 this morning, we're trading off 241 points. You dial right now off 186 or 4 tenths percent in the Russell, off by about 4 or about 1 tenth percent. Oh, I may sneeze. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. 
Uh, yes. So we check out yields, right? Look at the move we got going on, man. Off that 830 number. There it is, 8.30. This is a 15-minute bar we're looking at right to the tick low where we were yesterday morning. Man, just vicious moves, right? And there, we get below it. You're talking about higher yield coming at you, man. It is coming. Get ready for it, folks. We get the 10-year at 4.48. 4.48. We're on the way to 4.5, man. We are on the way to 4.5, and we'll see where we go from there. Yeah, but you're talking about higher yields. On a 10-year basis, you better believe it, man. Now, part of what ties into this, of course, all right, now how does it tie into the dollar? How does it tie into yields? There is a mandate, without a doubt. Okay, Democrats better wake up. And there's a lot that drives me crazy about Democrats, man. Uh, even though, you know, I'm a registered independent, folks, okay? But, you know, I love discourse and I love reality. And I would love to talk about these tax cuts and how they're, Pro growth and how they're going to lead to a better future for Tommy, who's three years old, right? That's what I look for, okay? I don't talk about next year. That's important. I want to make sure my family's good this year, next year. But I also want to think about, you know, my son, who's only three years old. Man, when I think about 20 years down the road, he's barely going to be out of college, all right? I think about 40 years down the road, he's going to be approaching my age. And boy, the debt, right? It always. And so this is going to be interesting when you talk about yields, man. Uh, if you just extend the, the 2017 tax cuts, that would push the number up 4.6 trillion. There it goes. Just extending the expiring tax cuts are going to drive up deficits about 4.6 trillion over 10 years. You add in some of the other stuff, and you're talking about potentially 8 trillion. Now they're big numbers across the board, and maybe you think that's necessary, right? Okay. What what I struggle with, right, is that. So you have Republican senators, okay, Mike Grapo, I'm not sure how you pronounced that last name, who's in line to chair the Senate Finance Committee. Pro-growth tax policies don't need to be paid for. Okay, that's, that's a position. He's an elected official, man. That's a position. That's going to matter, though, folks. Okay, we've seen this happen before. The 2017 tax cuts were supposed to basically pay for themselves. Not even close. Who could have seen that coming? All right. And that's, you know, I like to have conversations based on it. Make the make the argument. Make the argument tariffs are better. I love it. OK, because tariffs for Tommy's future, 20 years, 40 years down the road. You better believe that might be the case. But don't tell me that tariffs are paid for by China because they're not. They're paid for by American companies as a tax on goods they take in from China that they then push on to consumers. Right. Just like don't tell me the pro growth policies are paid for because they're not. They're going to contribute to the debt to some degree and that's going to matter in the long run. So it's going to be important to see where we go from there. Right. Um, and you talk about the tariffs in here as well. Of course, those get brought in. And yeah, they're going to have a mandate. They're going to come for it and they should. They won. Everything by dramatic margins, man. So you better believe it's coming. But they don't pay for themselves. And and yeah, that's 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 something that I wish we would talk about because they're going to see a big number. Yeah, you got pass through income. You have a lot going on, of course. It's pro growth, man. That is for sure. But we'll see if it's done. And there's going to be plenty of cuts. And that's great, too. I'm all about it. Let's cut some of the excess in the government, man, for sure. You know, there's a reason why Trump won by a landslide, man. OK, there's a lot of policies that he's been touting that people want. But the debt run ups not one of them. And that's one of them that I struggle to understand how all these tax cuts for corporations and wealthy individuals are going to push over to the debt. And um, they don't seem to be worried about what we can do here. You got one senator, right, who's going to be in charge of the Senate Finance Committee. And I'm bringing this up with yields, man. Okay, you better be watching this in the market. Because if you have four years of radical tax cuts, they're not going to pay for themselves, folks. It's not going to happen. And then you add in tariffs in there, they're going to be inflationary. Okay, there's a very real threat that yields are on the rise dramatically. When you talk about the tariffs and you talk about the ballooning debt, that's uh, only going to face some some tough go ahead. I was looking for one more quote. Yeah, here it was. Um, There's always a way to make things work, says David Camp, a senior policy advisor at PwC and a former Republican chairman of the House Ways and Means. 
the way it works, folks, is you cut taxes and it goes to the debt. That's what I don't understand. You know, that's that's how 2017 went. Remember that stuff. OK, there's always a way to make things work is one comment. And then you have pro growth tax policies don't need to be paid for. And I get it, man. They want to cut the government on on spending. OK, I get it. But that's not going to matter when it comes to the debt. It's not going to matter. OK. And yeah, look at yields. Even as we talk, man, you're continuing to drop. We're at one oh nine oh one. Let's jump over to the dollar. And we got the dollar pushing again, 106.79. And uh, as I mentioned, you're looking at the gold contract probably pushing somewhere in the neighborhood of, and gold holding up pretty well. What's going on? But gold probably making a pullback, probably making a pullback to the recent highs of about 2450 to the 2500 area. Because I think you have a little bit higher to go on yields right now. I think the Fed is rightfully so going to maintain some pause here because there's no reason why they, they can't, right? The economy is strong right now. OK, they are. I mean, we got jobless claims going down yesterday. Right. Retail sales come in nice this morning. We got CPI data out this week. Well in line. They don't really need to be that worried about inflation and they really don't need to be that worried about the job market right now as we have the market at all time highs. What do they need to be worried about? Probably moving a little bit too quickly in the face of so much uncertainty. It's OK to pause sometimes. Right. Think about the, the uncertainty on the horizon right now about what is going to become reality versus what's going to become rhetoric. And even if they just start pausing where they are right now, that's higher yield because the market was pricing in more cuts. And with that, we're about to get a 108 handle on the 10 year as I talk. All right. We're at 109. And, you know, it's always a, a tight walking app act to, you know, we don't want straight politics in the den. OK, you know, occasionally people go in there and they post far left YouTube videos far right YouTube videos that have nothing to do with anything, okay? They say, no, come on. That but so often they do combine, and that's the tight walking app. And what I'm trying to do today is talk about the economic policies, the tax policies, the debt policies that are going to come in line, the tariffs and how they're going to influence this market, and how that's going to influence the yields going forward as we approach some of those policies that are going to cause a potentially higher for longer interest rate. And one way to do it is to pass, and there's your 108 handle, okay, is to pass tax cuts that you literally come out and say they don't have to pay for themselves and we can somehow figure it out and make it happen. Literally. That's literally what I just went over the quotes, right? We don't care about paying for them because pro-growth policies don't have to be paid for and we can always figure out a way to make it work. The way it makes it work is it goes to the debt. And look at that, 108.31. All right, folks, stay tuned. We're coming back right after the break. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. 
Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got markets in negative territory. Palantir, though, not the case. This stock, man, up by 6.9%, and they're going from the NYSE to the NASDAQ. Yeah, and a little bit of a pop, 63.24 out there. Yeah, leaving the NYSE for the NASDAQ. They're going to the NASDAQ. Keep going down. Yeah, they like that move. 63.25, this thing longer term stratospheric from $15 at the beginning of the year to 63 bucks and you get an acceleration on their earnings you get an acceleration on the election as well <clears throat> all right we jump over to retail sales taking a look at some of the numbers that were out this morning <clears throat> as I mentioned the headline number now again these are unadjusted for inflation we know inflation's running at 2.3 to 2.8 percent at least and so these numbers have to keep up with that just to be keeping up with inflation. Nonetheless, 0.4% after an upwardly revised 0.8% gain in September. The control group sales for a three-month annualized rate. The reason why I bring this up is because this data, I think, is a little bit distorting. Maybe if there's lag. The number that we just got on the control group was 0.1% decline. You add in the last couple months, and yes, you have an annualized rate of 4.6, but that's down from 5.7, right? That's down from 5.7, and this is a three-month rolling basis. You can see how these last few months are going to carry this higher. We are going to get an excessive drop on a three-month basis on the control group retail sales in the coming months. And there's your change in value in retail sales. They're decent numbers, okay? Eight of the 13 categories posted increases. Auto sales posted, posted the strongest advance in three months. And you know what? I, you always got to listen to yourself a little bit, right? I talk about it on the program. We love technicals, man. Sometimes the technicals are so easy. But you got to listen to yourself sometimes when you have an anecdotal experience. My, my examples are, you know, signing up for Amazon Prime in the early days and realizing how revolutionary it was to get fast, quick delivery paid for with an annual membership, etc. Man, I wish I had loaded up on Amazon at that time because it was in the early days. OK, but you talk about the anecdotal of talking about retail sales. We talk about auto sales. All right. And I have to bring up, folks. I am renting a car because my car was just in the shop trying to make sure that everything was figured out correctly, and it was. And I have a Hyundai Palisade, Palisade that I rented, okay? I rented it from Hertz, and number one, it is amazing. Hertz, I shop rental cars, and they are trumping, for lack of a better word, enterprise, man. Hertz used to be the premium. That's not the case, man. They had to go PK. They've revolutionized themselves. They sold off a lot of the EVs. Is it not coming up? Come on. I just had a nice, sweet Hyundai Palisade I was going to pull up. All right, shame on them. Is that going to pull up? Uh, this Hyundai Palisade is beautiful, folks. 
And when you talk about, I've talked about it before, whether you're talking about um, Kia Telluride, right? Three-row SUV. So this one is a three-row SUV. Let me see if I can pull one up. Come on. I'm just trying to get a picture. I'll pull up there. I'll pull up there. Their page. It's a three-row SUV. The back seats, the second row seats are captain's chairs. And the, it's got a third row, and you can pop everything down. It's got a great digital display. And you're talking about a car that runs at about $45,000 a year brand new. And that's where you start looking. And listen, I have you know a BMW Coupe, which I love. I've been looking at potentially getting... An SUV. I'm trying to pull up a nice picture of one that's available. Let's get that one. Yeah, there we go. Because I don't understand. You know, if you have the cash, that's great. But, man, we're talking about, you know, getting a beautiful three-row SUV that runs $44,000 new. What I ask myself in that situation, right, is not why, but people seem to be getting carried away. And that's just, if you go into this car, folks, it's beautiful. I'm going to pull up some of the inside. There's your three-row SUVs. There's the two. It's difficult to imagine because I love, I've talked about it before. There's your second-row captain's chairs, all right? The displays are brand new. There it is. Um, beautiful digital displays, everything in there, okay? It's a nice driving experience. And don't get me wrong, all right? A, uh, a Yukon Denali three-row, maybe even extended cab. I love those things, man. They're beautiful. I love them. You know what I don't love? $110,000 for a Yukon Denali brand new versus $45,000 for a three-row SUV Hyundai Palisade. Folks, when you start talking about cars or houses, and this is $110,000, it's not many houses these days, okay? But you're talking about a level that's easily far exceeding down payments. Uh, anyway, for what it's worth. I'll give Hyundai a little love, man, because this is a beautiful car. I found myself taking a look and saying, man, this is remarkable. Dollar for dollar, right? Value for your dollar. It's tough to rationalize the value you're getting at $45,000 for some of these vehicles versus the value you're getting for $110,000. Yes, it's a better car. Yes, it's more premium. Yes, it's luxury. It probably has a better engine. Is it worth two and a half times the value that you're paying for a depreciating asset, right? We all know cars, especially if you buy them new. I can't rationalize that my, myself, you know? That's throwaway money, in my opinion. And I know we're facing but it makes me think about it. You know, you hear the price of the average new car, right? All that stuff. I, uh, that's a tough one to wrap my head around. And when you hear that stuff, right, listen to it. Because you see the likes of people who are in the upper middle class shopping more at Walmart, right? Price is approaching. There's no reason to be spending excess. It's We've seen Jeep have some troubles, right? I think that's coming down the line for cars, folks. All right? I think that it's going to be tougher and tougher to rationalize the Chevy Yukon Denali purchase, the, I mean, Jeep, what is it, the Jeep Wrangler purchase. So look for those car companies that have tremendous value. Kia, Hyundai. There's many others. Toyota, et cetera. Um, yeah. All right, we jump back to the market, NASDAQ 100. We're trading lower. Look where we are. We're coming right back below where we were on October 30th. The NASDAQ 100, now below that price point, 20,700. We just gave up 600 points. We're 300, excuse me, we're three percentage points off the high. And we've basically given back the Trump rump, okay? And I'm not being a pessimist, folks, but we were up to 20,680 in early October. We were all the way up to 20,538. September 26, yes, you had a run-up, but that run-up followed a pullback. Now, you could argue that as Trump was leading the polls, there was optimism built in. That was probably some of the optimism that ran from April to July. You had the pullback. There's a lot going on, but nonetheless, we're basically sitting at those highs, so there was a lot of optimism already priced into this market. Now, we jump over to NVIDIA shares this morning. Down by 1.7%. You're back to where we were on Monday at 144 after trading up to almost 150. We check in on some of the other equities. And Amazon down by 2.4%. Microsoft down by 1.6%. Apple shares down by 1.3%. Yeah, keep your spikes up in this market, folks. Google up by one and a quarter percent. We check back in on yields. 
We're back to a 109 handle, but you got that 10-year approaching 4.5%. We check back in on gold, up by $4.20. Speaking of 420, we check in on Tesla, up by 2%. One more segment, folks. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We have markets in negative territory. S&P's off by 44. You got the 10-year off by 15 ticks. We're at 10903, and let's talk some banks. So the headline out there from Bloomberg, Drunken Miller leads family offices boosting U.S. bank stock bets. Now, we all saw the banks accelerate higher on the election, but it is pretty remarkable. And you look at the broad base, and, of course, they got in before the action. So Drunken Miller's... Duquesne Family Office added almost a dozen U.S. banks. You had Citigroup, Key Corp, some of the banks they added. And that's for the quarter ended September 30th. Okay, That was the largest allocation by sector during the period for that firm's new investments. You have Soros' family office, First Citizens Bank Corp. Okay, They acquired Silicon Valley. You have number of others whether you're talking about paul allen's firm, firm firm adding jp morgan and bank of america now you jump around to some of these smaller ones right that they even mentioned in this article 
Let's see, what were they talking about here? Where did I see them? Yeah, um, Drunken Miller, some of the other regional lenders he added, M&T, Truist, Citizens, all right, MTB, TFC, and CFG are their symbols. MTB, there's M&T Bank, Accelerate. Look at the run. So they added these as of September 30th, folks. September 30th is here on this chart. They got in somewhere in the quarter leading up to that. My goodness, it's been quite a run for the banks. There's MTB. There's Citizens Financial. You accelerate higher. Again, they got in sometime during the prior quarter. And then what was the third one out there? Truist, TFC. Yeah. CFG? Yeah. And TFC, Truist. Same thing. They get in by September 30th. So depending on where they got, this one might have been a little higher. But then you look to the likes of J.P. Morgan, man. I mean, these big banks, and maybe in the longer term, it plays out regionally, but these big banks. All right, folks, thanks so much for tuning in. That was a quick hour. Stay tuned for our man, Basil Chapman. And if you missed Basil's webinar last night, folks, it was awesome. You can still sign up for the opening call. The archive is going to be up there by the end of the day today for the weekend. Check that out. Stay tuned for Basil. Have a great Friday. Have a great weekend. We'll see you back here Monday, folks. Have a great one.